Don't change the channel. Today we're talking channels. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we are bringing you a Flurn episode from our new studio. This is a kind of a temporary setup, but we're really excited to be in the new studio. It's an amazing space, and as soon as everything gets all laid out, we're gonna give you guys a really cool tour of the entire studio. So if you have any suggestions, if you have your dream studio in your head, and you're like, oh my God, you guys gotta put this in the studio, let us know, and we will let you know if we can put it in our studio. And then, if you guys are in town, we are in Chicago, come and visit, we'd love to have you guys. So today we are talking channels, and Channels are, they're this like big scary thing. A lot of people don't uh, mess with them too much. But the thing to remember about channels is just that they're a great way of making selections. They're a really good way to make selections. I'm going to talk to you all through them and I'm going to show you guys some great things you can do. Now the best thing you can do with channels for the most part is when you have something light on a dark background, that's how you can separate it out. Or something dark on a light background, you can use that to separate them out. So channels are amazing for that and uh, we're going to get into it. By the way, Flurn turns two years old this coming Wednesday, and uh, it's been two years of creating amazing episodes and being with you guys as a family. We're going to have a big sale this coming Wednesday, and I can't wait. So let's get into this episode, and uh, congratulations to all of you guys and Flurn for turning two years old. That's awesome. All right, so here's an image. This is by a friend of mine, Masataka, who did an amazing job. I love this image. Uh, it's backlit and front lit and um, just really great. The shallow depth of field really pulls everything together. And what we're going to be doing today with channels is we're going to be actually getting this area, like the smoke and things like that. We're going to be pulling this out and then pushing everything else quite a bit darker. So I'm going to show you guys how to take that out of the background while making everything a little bit darker. So let's go into our channels. If you guys don't see channels, mine are over here, but if you don't see them, just go to window and then down here to channels. So again, we said channels are a great way to make selections. So if I click on this RGB here, this is a combination of all three of my color channels. Now let's click on a red channel and we can see this is all the information in my image that's basically quote unquote red. Uh, the lighter areas have more of this color channel, the darker areas have less of this color channel. The green channel we can see looks a little bit different. People have less green in their skin obviously. And then a blue channel is even darker. People have a lot less blue in their skin than they do for instance red. So using your different color channels you can Great, create a great way to cut things out of the background. And what you're looking for is a difference here between light and dark. So anytime you're gonna have that difference. Now in our red channel, we can see the smoke and things like that here. There's not a huge difference between the smoke that we have in the foreground versus uh, our subject who's in the background. Now here in our green channel it gets a little bit better, but in the blue channel, we really do see quite a bit of difference. So there's a big contrast here. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that contrast, which is gonna help us draw something out. So now that we have that smoke in a relatively light color and or just a light tone and the background is a bit darker, what we're going to do is choose the best channel and in this case it, it's going to be the blue channel and we're going to duplicate that. So I'm going to click here and just drag to the new channel icon. So we have a blue copy. Now what I want to do is kind of enhance that a little bit more. I want to push the whites even lighter and the darks a little bit darker. So I'm just going to run a levels adjustment on that. To do that just hit command or control L and now we're going to grab our input levels and I'm just going to take the dark point and just make that just a bit darker. And you can see it's kind of leaving my light point away. It's leaving the light point alone, which is where our smoke is. I can bring my light point up. That's going to make that a little bit lighter. So we're getting what's already starting to be a pretty nice contrast between light and dark. Now I don't want to go too far. If I go too far, I'm going to lose a lot of information there in my smoke. Although, you know, behind it is completely black. We've lost a lot of information in our smoke. So I don't mind, you know, we can see a little bit of forehead here. That's not as big of a deal as losing all that information in our smoke. So something right about there, I think looks really good. So we're gonna hit okay. And now we can, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need to like extract that smoke out of the background. So how do we actually do it? Well, whenever you guys are using channels, if you control or command click right here on the thumbnail or just click right over here, what it's gonna do is anything that's lighter than black, so grays, white, thing like that, those are gonna get selected and the blacks will not get selected. So they also varying degrees of selection. So something that's pure white is 100% selected. Something that's 50% gray is only 50% selected. So what I'm gonna do is hold down Control or Command and click right here on my blue copy. And you can see the lighter areas have a little bit of uh, selection around them. Everything that is lighter than black does get selected. 
Um, it just chooses the lightest areas to put the selections around. OK, so those areas are all selected. Now, we're going to go back to my layers here. And uh, let's just delete the layer that I was just creating there. And we'll just make a new layer. So now that we have a new layer, what we can do is choose to paint. So keep in mind, um, you know, areas like his shoulder and the, ha the hair and things like that, those are all still selected. But what we want to do is just paint in this smoke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a white paintbrush. And uh, we're just going to paint right over here where the smoke is. So using my white paintbrush, now you can see that's what Scott selected. I'm painting right over top of the smoke. And we're just going to paint a little bit up there as well. Choose a nice softer brush and kind of paint that out like that. There we go. And I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D. Now, the coolest thing here is this is a lot different from using like a curves adjustment layer because what I actually did is I painted white pixels on top of a transparent background. So I can move these around. I'm going to grab my Move tool by hitting V. And I can click and actually just move these around. And so what I have on its own layer, a new layer, is just my smoke, which is amazing. I mean, I could do really anything I wanted with it. If I wanted to like transform it and, you know, make it look like there was even more smoke, you know, coming out of the side or that looks totally stupid, but you get the idea. It's on its own layer. You can do with it whatever you want. So now what we're going to do, because this is on its own layer, it doesn't matter what you do underneath it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold control or command. We're going to create a layer beneath it. And for instance, if I just want to paint with a black paintbrush and just start painting black, it doesn't matter. This is on its own layer. You can do whatever you want beneath it. So what we're doing here is we're going to use this white that's not going to get affected no matter what we do to create a really interesting contrast between light and dark. So using the channels to select out that light, let's grab a curves adjustment layer. And now what we can do is start to bring our white point and start to really bring that down. So we can get something that's going to be even more uh, quote unquote low key. And I can do this however I want to. There we go. Now, you can get really creative here. You can see that just basically darkened everything. But if I hit Command-I on that, I can use this almost like a creative tool um, doing something similar to dodging and burning. In other words, you know, I can choose to leave some detail in some areas if I want and really darken up other areas if I don't want them to be light. There we go. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just using my layer mask here. There we go. And we can go ahead and darken all that area as well. So I do want this to be dark, but I don't want to lose detail everywhere. Like I kind of like the detail in the shoulders and things like that. Um, there we go. Let's make it really dark there. So we've darkened up quite a bit, but at the same time, the smoke is staying the same. If I didn't do that, this is what happens with the smoke. If I hadn't selected out with the channels, it's going to get darker along with the rest of the image. But since we did, now we have smoke that really does stand out. So if you have an element in your image that you want to make stand out, you can select it out from the background, just like we did with our channels, and then you can just push that and uh, make it really stand out. So a very cool use of channels on a really cool image. And um, yeah, I think this really does make it. So last but not least, if you guys wanted to, let's go back to our channels. Let's say you didn't have something that was white. Let's say it was you know something that was actually a couple different colors. Well, you could do this by selecting control clicking on your blue channel or your blue copy or whatever copy you made. And instead of just painting with a color on a new layer, you could just go to your background or whatever layer you had and hit command J. And what that's going to do is it's going to select out the lighter areas and just copy them onto a new layer. So instead of just painting white, now we have the actual colors that are on the underlying layer and it's just going to copy those lighter areas onto a new layer. So let's see what that looks like. Um, we're going to bring that above everything. So the darker area, now we have just those lighter areas are going to come through and then the white as well. So we can see this is not, you know, this is not a curves adjustment layer. These are actual pixels and uh, so it's not degrading your image at all. So now we have something with even more contrast than before, um, especially with that other areas we added in there. And again, it's choosing the lightest areas that it's going to bring forward and it's going to push everything else back. So here's our before and our after. An awesome image before and after is just a bit more dramatic. And uh, we did it all using channels. So I hope you learn a little bit more about using channels. And they're really great when you have a contrast between light and dark. Or if you have a red object standing against a different color background, you can use your red channel to select that out really quickly, really easily, and it's very precise. So guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. We turned two years old. This coming Wednesday, we're having a huge sale, and I hope to see you there. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. When I turned two, I couldn't even go to the toilet by myself. And look at us. We're already in a second studio. What?